the second learning objective we're going to focus on are the forms of business organization. What kind of business organization shall I form when I start a new company or maybe when I change my existing company? Should I form a sole proprietorship? And what are the implications of the sole proprietorship? And what are the liabilities associated with each? Should I form a partnership, a general partnership or a limited partnership? And, or, and should I f um, form a, a corporation to protect myself liability-wise? Uh, these are the things we're going to discuss here under forms of business organization. What types of organization is owned by one person? A single person, simplest organization type to form and has unlimited liability. This is the sole proprietorship. And some of you may have started a business already where you were the sole proprietor. Uh, and we'll talk about the types of liability affiliated with each, the cost of each, and so on. Uh, two, what type of organization has two or more people? Uh, two or more owners and unlimited liability, answer a partnership. So you may have formed a partnership with a friend of yours or colleague of yours. And third, what type of organization is a legal person separate and distinct from its owners and has limited liability and this is a corporation? So these are the three key types. There are others and we'll go over one other variation of these here in a minute. Uh, things to consider when forming an organization, number one, how much does it cost? I've formed several corporations in my life and uh, for as little as $200, uh, went to an attorney uh, downtown and was able to start a corporation to uh, manage distressed uh, real estate. Um, again, these vary in a larger city, you may pay a little bit more. Uh, what, what about the continuity? How stable is the organization? Who controls the organization comes into consideration. What is the personal liability is a key consideration. And how about taxability or taxation of the organization's earnings? How are they taxed? And each of these are different. In the sole proprietorship, some of the advantages are very simple to form. Uh, you can basically uh, use your social security number and start a sole proprietorship. And your income gets taxed uh, along with your personal income. Not very regulated. Get a business license, go downtown, and start your business. Um, income, as I said, is taxed as personal. Some of the disadvantages uh, you have unlimited personal liability. So if anything goes wrong in your corporation, you can be sued. Or in your, uh, I'm sorry, sole proprietorship, you can be sued because you have unlimited liability. Uh, limited lifespan, limited amount of capital. The amount of capital that can be put into the sole proprietorship is limited to your personal wealth. So think about that if you uh, decide to start a sole proprietorship. In terms of a partnership, you may uh, gather a partner and say, let's start a lemonade stand. You may have done this when you're uh, very, very young. Uh, general partnership, these are the people running the organization. All partners uh, share in the gains and losses equally, and all income is taxed as personal. Uh, you have unlimited liability on the debts if you're a general partner. If you're a limited partner in this partnership, uh, your uh, liability is limited to the amount you've contributed to the organization. Uh, some of the advantages of the uh, partnership, very simple to form once again. You share the profits and your income is taxed as personal income. Disadvantages, you still have unlimited liability if you're a general partner and uh, limited life of the business. The life of the business is limited to the life of the partners and a little bit difficult to uh, transfer ownership on the, um, on the partnership. Again, you may have done this when you were young, uh, maybe creating a lemonade stand or a Kool-Aid stand, maybe a uh, lawn mowing or uh, uh, contracting business, uh, landscape contracting business. You may have formed with a partner. Again, our authors recommend that you get a written agreement. A lot of times you'll do that just on uh, a word or a whim. It's better if you write all of this down. Uh, the third type of business organization is a corporation which is a business uh, separate and distinct. Uh, it's really a legal person separate and distinct from its owners. A corporation can borrow money, buy property, can sue and be sued, can own stock in other corporations. So it's very much a legal person. Uh, public ownership is one of the advantages. You can sell stock in the corporation. In this case, a real key advantage is you have limited liability. So the shareholders are not liable. Um, or on a personal basis, you can protect your own personal assets by forming a corporation. Uh, very easy to transfer ownership. You can sell shares of stock and unlimited life of the business. You hope it goes on forever. Uh, some of the disadvantages, you have strict regulation, stricter regulation of the corporation. Um, 
very sometimes expensive to form. Again, I was very fortunate when we formed our corporation, we were able to do it for just a few hundred dollars. But uh, you may find it a little bit more expensive than that these days. That was 10 years ago when I formed my corporation. Uh, how do you do it? Essentially, go see an attorney is recommended. And the attorney will prepare for you a uh, set of documents, one of which is the Articles of Incorporation. This will include the uh, corporate name, the intended life, business purpose, number of shares to be issued. In my case, the name of the company was Lycom Technologies to stand for uh, light communications. We made fiber optic attenuators. Our uh, president liked to call them fiber optic widgets because they were very complex to understand. And basically they went into telecommunication networks and we were gonna sell millions of them. We wanted this business to go on forever. And uh, 10 years ago, uh, it's, after 10 years, it's still in operation, 11 years later. Um, so it's, that's a good thing. Uh, corporate name, Lycom Technologies. The owners were Dr. Jay Patel, President uh, Dr. Song Woo So, Vice President of Engineering, Greg Pierce, uh, Chief Financial Officer. So these were all listed in the Articles of Incorporation. Our, uh, we intended it to go on forever. Uh, the purpose was to make fiber optic attenuators for use in telecommunications networks. And uh, the attorney at the time uh, authorized 10,000 shares. And this was included in a little three ring binder that she gave us. And uh, this was all detailed in the Articles of Incorporation. Also in there were the bylaws that said that you will meet in December of each year and decide on matters of, very, uh, of interest to the corporation, um, how the business will operate, uh, so, and, and she uh, also told us we must get together every December for the annual meeting to vote on these uh, critical matters. So the stockholders, which were, uh, which was essentially just the president, elected the board of directors, which were the same people. Again, it's a very small corporation, not the big corporation uh, organization form that you saw in the prior organization chart, but uh, the CFO had to do everything, including uh, take out the trash and sweep the floor. Uh, so in the small corporation, it's a lot different. Um, the stockholders elect the board of directors. The board of directors will hire and fire management. Also put in the local newspaper will be these uh, notices of incorporation. Uh, here's a sample that was in a recent newspaper, um, Kelly Services, and you can see on the left that Kelly Services was incorporated by Liz Dupuy of Miller, Kistler, Campbell, and Williams. And uh, while they had uh, Liz's services, they also created some uh, fictitious names, uh, Kelly's Wallpapering, Kelly's Snow Removal, and Kelly's Landscaping. So these folks have something to do all year long. So during the summer, they'll do landscaping and landscape contracting. Uh, during the winter, they will plow snow. And then when there's no snow on the ground in January, they will do some painting and wallpapering. So very clever use of Fictitious Names Act. And all this was done under the uh, Articles of Incorporation. Here's an example of a corporate dissolution of a company uh, I had mentioned. I started a small company that did fiber optic attenuators called Lycom Technologies. We received a phone call one day uh, that suggested that someone else had already uh, taken that name and for us to cease and desist uh, using that name, Lycom Technologies. We still want to run the corporation, but in some cases you have to dissolve the corporation and restart it. So uh, we went again back to our attorney, Eisenstein and Bauer, and, and asked them to dissolve the corporation that we had set up uh, um, a few years earlier because we didn't want to um, get into any legal uh, tangles with anyone else using that name. And so we dissolved Lycom Technologies and we restarted up Optelium, uh, which eventually became Optelios. So we restarted another uh, business. This one was incorporated in Delaware, whereas Lycom Technologies was incorporated in Pennsylvania. And we just restarted under a new name called Optelium slash Optelios. And you can see that on the announcement that the attorney puts in the uh, local papers involved. Other forms of business organization that you can use, uh, a new and evolving form is limited liability company, which has the, a blend of the attributes of the corporation and the partnership. It has the limited liability of the corporation and the taxation advantage of the, um, of the partnership. Uh, under the disadvantages of the corporation, one key disadvantage is double taxation. What that means is sales minus cost are uh, whatever uh, pre-tax income is available is taxed once, and then if the corporation also then goes on to pay dividends, then the shareholder is taxed twice. And that's what we mean by the uh, disadvantage of uh, double taxation. The limited liability company takes that away and gives you the tax advantage of the partnership.
some examples, some recent examples of LLCs. Goldman Sachs was a private company, and then went LLC, and then recently has gone public, and maybe they'll go back to LLC form someday. KPMG, uh, Credit Suisse, First Boston, and some other companies are adopting this very popular format.